Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. My partner, Art Kirsch, and I are pleased to once again bring you Michelle Fabrega, our fabulous love and relationship coach. Michelle, good to see you. Great to be here with you both. Hi, Michelle. You, you I know, I was thinking, oftentimes we're talking about relationships of couples and, and uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, I wonder, do you have anything that, how about just it's about me? It's just about us. Uh, <laughs> It's always about something. art, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, well, for John, too, and for you, Michelle. But <laughs> something that doesn't actually involve anything else of, other than being in a good frame of mind, getting in a good mm. frame of mind, which, which will make us better for other people as well. Do you have anything that's basically advice just for us? Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, just for the individual. Absolutely, mm. yeah. So l let's do it. Um, I want to talk about... It's going to sound a little radical, maybe. I want to talk about cultivating bliss. bliss. <laughs> um, you know, being happy in our lives. How do we do that? How do we stay upbeat, even if situation or circumstances are challenging, right? Yeah, good yeah. question. Because uh, let's face it, we've all got challenging. I love that phrase, challenging circumstances. That's when the world goes to crap around you. Yeah, yeah but I'm looking for something more than that little app that says, be calm and uh -huh. you have to go around in a circle for like oh, yeah. 15 seconds. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think we looking into ourselves and making ourselves feel happier would be a valuable thing. And I was hoping you could help us with maybe some ways to go about that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because I, I think sometimes, especially as we're getting older, I think we can have the thoughts we can have thoughts around like, oh, we're on the downslope or there's illness. I just lost my best friend. They just passed away. You know, things are changing. There's there's sorrow, there's grief, there's difficulty. And um, the, the question is, you know, how do we how do we cope with this and 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 just keep ourselves, um, you know, resilient and 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 happy, basically. So it, it really comes down to pra their practices. I mean, basically, I took a, a really great course that I'm going to give you the link to. It's a free course offered by Yale University, it's called The Science of Well-Being, and it's a, very, a series of practices that really help ra basically raise your happiness set point. I highly recommend it, and um, yeah, so one of the things they discuss really are there's the scientific evidence for things that will make a difference in our mood and outlook. And it also talks about some things that we think would make us happier, but actually don't. Like for instance, you know, uh, you know spoiler alert, more money is not one of the things that, that is going to make us happier, generally. Maybe more money doesn't suck, though. <laughs> That's true. You can That's work, true. You can work around we, the, the misery of more yeah. money. Yeah, yeah but so, one of the things that... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. I, I was going to say, Michelle, art has a great philosophy. You, you've heard of the, do you see the glass half full or half empty? I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about. Yes, Art's philosophy exactly. is... The glass he is always, always sees full. The glass, a hundred percent full. <laughs> well, and, and why? Because if there's water in half of it, there's air in the rest of it. So I mean, we need both. There you go. There, well, that's a great thing. Yeah. So that's one of those uh, touch points that you can remind yourself of when but things John, are different. But John, right? let's get back to the point. Money doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are, Michelle, so what are what are some of the practices? that we could use to bring ourselves bliss or happiness or despite the fact that we're aware of all the things that are going wrong, whatever they are, whether they're outside influences like COVID or relationship problems or whatever the, or whatever health the issues. issues. Right. Or yeah, health issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, one of the ones is, you know, some of these are gonna sound maybe a little trite, but you know, getting a good night's sleep. And um, that's something that can really make a difference in a, how a person feels. Now, granted, there are often challenges that people have with sleeping and maybe they're staying up too late or maybe there are health challenges, but basically what can you do to improve the amount and quality of sleep that you're getting so that you wake up feeling rested and not you know, tired and grumpy, right? So that's one thing. Okay, okay what else? 
Yeah. So the other one is just to practice kindness. And they, one of the exercises in the course is to do random act of kindness, you know, random acts of kindness, you know, whether you pay for the toll, the person behind you, you buy a coffee for the other person in line, you know, whatever the kind of things are, do something special for your partner or for your kids or um, the neighbor, right? It's just when we give to others and show kindness, it, it's, it helps us feel good, right? It can be almost self-serving to be kind to another person. And, um, and, and also, you know, social connection is very important, right? A lot of us, especially during COVID, right, are more isolated. Reach out to a friend, call up a friend that you haven't spoken to in a while. And it's to stay connected to other people. Reach out to a long lost, you know, friend from high school, who knows, right? Um, it's really important to stay connected to other people. And um, that's one of the things that people who are more socially connected tend to feel happier in their lives and live longer too, right? Right. You know, that's great advice. I think I'm going to, uh, right here, I'm going to provide an act of kindness to my beloved partner, John. John, <laughs> next week, I'm going to follow you through the line at Starbucks. And if you leave, <laughs> if you leave your credit card there, I'm not only going to sure. order a latte, but I'm going to order one of their expensive little sandwiches. So thank you in advance for, <laughs> for, for paying it backward. <laughs> Art, I am I am so happy that you have given me the opportunity to be happy yes. by serving you. Yes, you're, yeah. you, you look more blissful already. Michelle, yeah. it, it, you know, the idea of happiness is not... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not that you're ignoring the reality around you, whatever right, right. the issues are that that yeah. could make you unhappy. It's right. your, are, is it as simple as saying you're just not focusing on the you unhappiness, know, the, the glass it, half empty? Yeah, it's kind of an attitude shift, okay? Like, you know, I'm thinking of someone I know, they're wife was going through cancer and chemotherapy treatment and they go in together and they're watching movies together and they're laughing and enjoying the experience of her getting chemotherapy right and so you know the, the doctor came in and and it's just like you're all laughing they're all joyful and it's like the doctor was confused right it's kind of like you know in any moment i mean even in really difficult situations we can find something and um, that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's just, a, it's like, you know, we humans can tend to have a negativity bias, right? And that's where we're kind of noticing the negative or more impacted by the negative, or we're more, we tend to be more worried about negative things that could happen, or we think about the past, oh, you know, regret, whatever. And it's like, the more we can, you know, widen the present lens and, and not be thinking about the future or the past, the more we can be in our experience and noticing the good. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a practice and we might, we have to, it's like a muscle we need to develop, I think. And um, I like to help people with that because I think it can make a huge difference in our outlook. And I'm assuming that happiness therefore is a choice that you can make. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. I, I mean, mean, to a certain degree, obviously there are plenty of things that you can't control in life. You know, right, but right. you can uh, you can change your attitude towards them. Exactly. Yeah. And so basically what this course talks about are some different things that you can do to kind of just lift, you know, to, to support you in feeling feeling better. Right. Um, another one is gratitude. Right. You, I'm sure we many of us have heard of this, but it's either, you know, it's a gratitude practice. You can either you can write in a journal every evening, maybe five things you're grateful for. You can tell, you know, a friend or a partner, you know, um, what you're grateful for. Certainly tell them what you're what you're grateful for about them in your life, right? Or a friend or your adult children or whoever. Like, you know, thanking the person who, you know, makes your coffee just so in the morning. Wow, I really appreciate the way you make this coffee. It just gives me so much joy to come here and, 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 and enjoy it here. And, you know, those kinds of things, like just expressing it, right? Expressing gratitude. And, and it kind of dovetails with the other one, which is savoring, which is one of my favorites. Savoring? Savoring, yeah. So the idea is that there are things that I'm sure you enjoy in your life. There are things I enjoy in my life that, you know, oh, yeah, this cup of coffee, great. Oh, yum, that's good. Okay, bye, next. But, I mean, I love the smell of it. 
I look, I sip it. I kind of close my eyes. I tell my friends about, oh, I'm having my coffee. Now, you know, I'll text somebody, whatever. Not always. I'm not a, like a super text, uh, wild, crazy person. But, but you know, it just I really <laughs> take the moments to enjoy it. Or when I do on a walk and I'll see a flower, I'll just stop and look at it, notice the color, notice the petals. So we're really engaging as many of our senses as we can in little, in, in small and big experiences, right? Um, uh, it, it, it seems like, I, I, you know, it, to me, it sounds like, uh, as I observe myself talking here, I'm like, this sounds kind of frivolous, or this sounds kind of like, you know, a, being a simpleton or something like that, right? But it's actually just, why not get jazzed up about things, right? You know, look, think of like puppies, they get all excited, little kids get excited, some new thing. Why can't we also cultivate that for ourselves rather than just like, yeah, seen it all, cup of sure. coffee, blah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> they they uh, they used to use the phrase "stop and smell the roses." Mm. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and that's that's what you're talking about: savoring life, savoring the little right. thing, the little and things, exactly. Pre uh, essentially, appreciating all the little things in life. Um, right. It made you know the it, for some reason, my mind wandered back to uh, many many years ago. Worked at a television station, and there was one guy, who just he was. He was just a curmudgeon. He was an unhappy guy. And I always wondered if it, it made him happy to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he yeah. always seemed to be in a bad mood. And uh, I thought to myself at the time, he must like it. <laughs> yeah, or he, he must like it enough to not be willing to do anything to make a difference. Um, right. And, you know, th part of the reason this topic is so interesting to me is uh, I like to be happy, <laughs> but also in love and relationship, I mean, let's face it, who would you rather be in a relationship with? Somebody who's happy or somebody who's a curmudgeon? Somebody who's always complaining sure. and like, oh, I'll oh, get what, get a load of what happened to me, the car, you know, traffic, da, 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 right. da, this. It's like, do I want to hear someone complaining or do I want to see somebody t tell me about, oh, I had this really cool exchange with the person at the Lucky's grocery store and we were sharing about how much we love this movie together, you know, whatever. It's like, that's what is so much more fun, right? So yeah. it's, it kind of, it, it helps us, but it also helps the, you know, like, you know, happiness is contagious, right? Well, you know, you, know, you, yep. you make yeah. me think back to a practice that um, particularly pre COVID, but I can even think in, in this world of, of uh, uh, COVID is that, just going into, let's say, uh, like you say, a, a grocery store. Uh, uh, over the past uh, year, people's hair would get longer and the color may change <laughs> to a more natural <laughs> color and things like that. And then every so often you go in and you see somebody, let's say, with a haircut. Uh, even if they haven't changed it, but they, they finally got their haircut after nine months or something like that. Yeah. And I always, in the past, and I still do today, uh, but not as frequently, like to know these little things and then in essence pay a compliment to somebody who I don't really know uh, mm. a, a, a common thing on something about that that made me happy seeing right. them yeah. happy or something about them so uh, I guess that's that's my my little world of uh, creating blisses noticing things in other people right right and noticing how it impacts you and sharing how it impacts you positively yeah yeah, yeah. Love that. I, yeah. I'm uh, I'm fascinated to go take this uh, free online course at Yale. Uh, yeah, it yeah. Sounds, sounds like it could be very useful. Yeah, what's the name of that again? Um, it's called the Science of Well-Being. Yeah, and and the last yeah. tip I want to bring up is you know having some kind of meditation or mindfulness practice, and this has been proven as a way to help people feel happier and. Um, more joyful in their life. And, you know, basically when we can quiet our mind, take time to do that and be more in the present moment, we can notice some of these small little things. Um, you know, even like, I mean, something like my daughter might call me about something that she's troubled by. And my first thought is she's reaching out to me to share something difficult with me. I'm like, get this hit of joy that she feels comfortable reaching out to me for something. And then we get into it, you know, and whatever it is, or sometimes it's about me that she's upset about, you know, but my first thought is always noticing 
she has chosen to call me. This is a beautiful thing. So anyway, you know, these are the kind of things I'm talking about, this minutia, the, the moments of something happening when somebody is telling you something, wow, they chose to tell me, like they trusted me. Anyway, so I, you can mind this like all over the place. So um, look forward to hearing what you discover and in, in how you can savor more and um, practice some of these, yeah. these. Uh, Good. You know what? I'll, I think, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I think the people uh, who uh, practice uh, things like uh, yoga, and Tai Chi and even some martial arts, uh, some uh, a true uh, combative martial arts, always have a, a portion of calming, either during or before mm -hmm. or after those exercises of uh, either breathing or certain motions that sort of like slow everything down. And right, so right. I, I think those are useful as well. Yeah, and actually I totally forgot, I'm glad you brought that up. I forgot about exercise. That's also one of the keys, right? Oh, um, sure. You know, that's well known, right? That just getting some extra, a 10 minute walk, a 20 minute, whatever, like some kind of movement, um, getting your heart rate up a little bit, like that, that boosts mood. And uh, do it with a buddy, do it with a friend. And then you got some social connection going on and um, share gratitude with each other while you take a walk. Anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? This has been great because everybody wants to be happy. Except for that guy I used to work with. He was easy <laughs> But that made him happy. And Being unhappy made him happy. Yeah. Mm. Michelle, thanks so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.